Hi there, may I introduce you to my very special HP 3400A RMS voltmeter? I call it my Frankenmeter because where a normal 3400A has an analog instrument, mine sports a digital readout. I bought this meter complete with analog instrument for scrap in a horrible condition, but then I found that the electronics were actually repairable. The analog instrument on the other hand? Well, I really don't know in what cow shed this poor thing was stored. Just from the looks it appears pretty hopeless to make that work again, and so it turned out. Even if the needle moved, there's hardly anything of the scale printout left. These meters are held together with a metal profile bar on the top, which needs some persuasion to slide out. Next come some bolts that need to be removed. I thought that was it, but no, there are two additional screws that have to go as well. I kept everything organized so I could reassemble it if the repair was successful. Finally the meter opens and oh boy, inside it's worse than it looked before. The actual mechanics are attached to the scale which needs to be removed to clean it. But first, the needle appears to be stuck. Closer examination shows that the whole moving coil mechanism is completely rusted in place. The gap between the coil and the outer magnets appears to be filled with some strange bubbly outgrowth. After soaking it in WD-40 for a day, I tried to remove this, but that's only possible where I have access and not inside the gap. I left it for another week in WD-40, but finally I had to admit that it's hopeless. I need a new meter. I searched for a long time to find a suitable donor unit with a working meter, but no luck. Rather than being stuck with a dead HP 3400A, I devised a plan how to remove it analog head and transplant a digital head freshly sourced from the graveyard called eBay on it. Frankenstein would have approved it, I'm sure. My choice of a new head came in this box. It has a range of plus minus 200 millivolts and needs 5 volts as supply voltage. Its writing is somewhat confusing and maybe there are different variants out there so check carefully what model you get. I tested the accuracy of the digital voltmeter and it's fair enough. There's a pot on the back that allows corrections if needed. The input resistance is not great, about 100k. A note to this section here on the upper right of the PCB which defines the decimal point. Depending on the solder bridge you can select where the decimal point is, but the range is always 0 to 200 millivolts. Originally it came with a bridge set to 200 which means it shows 200 millivolts as 200.0 which is what you just saw. If the bridge is set to 2, it would show 200 millivolts as 2.000 or if set to 20 as 20.00 20 or 2000 if no solder bridge is set. This is the display with a solder bridge on the 2. And this is it with no solder bridge which is what I decided in the end. The last thing to note on the selection of the panel meter is the power draw. It takes 40 milliamps at 5 volts. Also very importantly the 5 volt ground is connected to the input ground of the meter. As this extract from the schematics shows, the HP 3400A has actually a DC out socket which provides a negative 1 volts at full scale of the meter. This is the signal I decided to tap, but things are not quite so straightforward. The output voltage is negative with respect to ground. And the other issue is where to get the 5V supply for the meter. The HP 3400A uses weird voltages of minus 17.5V for most electronics and a second rail of plus 77V. There's actually a third rail of plus 6V but that's a rather sensitive stabilized voltage for the heater of the tube in the input circuit. Yes, this meter has a vacuum tube because even small changes in the heater voltage would directly influence accuracy, that heater circuit is best left alone. Deriving the 5 volts from minus 17.5 volts is problematic because a 5 volt regulator would need to convert half a watt into heat and that 
plus the actual power needed by the digital part may be too much for the HP 3400A power supply. Also, for the panel meter, the HP 3400A's ground would be positive 17.5 volts down regulated to 5 volts, and the minus 17.5 volt rail becomes ground for the panel meter. While that's no problem by itself, DC out measured voltages would now also be referenced to the panel meter ground, which means DC out of 0 volt appears as plus 17.5 volts and minus 1 volt as plus 16.5 volts. The 77 volt supply would avoid these problems, but it would be very challenging to make an efficient 5 volts out of this without overloading or overheating. Finally, because the HP 3400A bandwidth is 10 MHz, I don't want any switching AC or DC converters in there causing interference. In broad terms, this is the plan I implemented. The power for the new head comes from a small linear power supply for an isolated 5 volts. For convenience, the AC mains comes from behind the original power switch, so it's using the same mains power cable and fuse and turns on and off together with the main unit. To avoid showing all the values with a minus sign, the DC connection to the HP 3400A is swapped. This is possible because of the insulating power supply. Note that there are two grounds in this schematic, an analog ground and a digital ground, and they must be kept separate. Lastly, because the DC out voltage is 0 to 1 volt, but the meter can only measure 0 to 200 millivolts, a range converter is needed. To consider the range converter needed, let's have a quick look at the HP 3400A ranges using this drawing from the manual. First thing to note is that the range selector goes from 0.001 volts or 1 millivolt or minus 60 dB on the left to 300 volts or plus 50 dB on the right, and the values alternate between 1 and 3, so 3 millivolts followed by 10 millivolts followed by 30 millivolts and so on. Secondly, if you look at the meter scale, there are two scale markings. The upper one goes from 0 to 1 full scale, as you would expect, but the second one goes from 0 to slightly more than 3. In fact, it goes to 3.162 full scale because that value corresponds to minus 10 or minus 30 or minus 50 dB and similar plus 10, plus 30 and plus 50 dB. The first concept of a range converter consists of just a simple voltage divider. It gets 1 volt in on the DC out port and it reduces that to 100 millivolts for the panel meter. If I measure for example 1 volt RMS in the 1 volt range, the panel meter would show 1000, which is nice and easy. That scheme is easy to implement, but not that great if I measure something in any of the ranges that use 3, or rather 3.162 for full scale. 3.162 volt RMS in the 3 volt scale would produce 1 volt DC out and therefore shown as 1000. Some multiplication by 3.162 is needed to make sense of that. It is easy to transfer the multiplication job into the divider at the cost of now having to switch the panel meter divider every time the HP 3400A moves between a 1 or a 3 scale. That switching is needed because obviously the values for R1 and R2 are different. For 1 volt DC out, one set produces 100 millivolts and the other 31.62 millivolts, but the advantage is that the value is now directly readable on the display. There is however the issue that this convenience inevitably reduces the readout to three digits. Arguably, that's still better than squinting at a needle on an analog scale, but I find it wasteful not using the four digits of the panel meter. Introducing a third set of divider resistors helps to overcome this issue at least partially. The third set produces a times 10 greater output than the second set. This means up to 1.999 volt RMS input in the 3 volt range. I get 1999 as readout, but anything larger will now overflow the panel meter and you have to go back to the previous set and 3 digits. 
It's not an ideal solution, and to be honest, if I did not already had an old scavenged rotary switch with three positions in the spare parts bin, I would have gone with a two range implementation needing just a simple switch. A quick note about rotary switches. There are two types, called make before break and break before make. The name is about what happens when you rotate the switch to the next position. In the make before break, the switch connects to the next position before it disconnects from the previous one. That means there's always a connection from the root point to at least one of the contacts. In the other type, the switch connects first from the previous position, then connects to the next one. This means for a short moment there is no connection between the root and any of the contacts. In this application, you do not want to overload the panel meter. If you have one of the make before break switches, you wire it up like on the left side. That way, there's always at least one resistor to ground in the divider, limiting the voltage that can get to the output. If that wiring would be used with a break before make switch, there would be a moment when there is no grounding resistor and the whole input voltage is at the output. For break before make, you have to use the circuit on the right in which the meter is essentially disconnected from the input while switching. Again, if that wiring were used for a make before break switch, there would be a moment where two of the upper resistors would be in parallel and therefore allowing a much higher output voltage than planned. Since I had a make before break switch, I used this schematic for the range converter. The needed resistance values are not standard, so I added three trimmers to get the right values. The positions of the switch are easy to memorize. 1 for the 1 scale and 3 for the 3 scale and 2 for the 3 scale where the value is less than 2000 to get more resolution. The necessary parts. A piece of aluminium serves as the carrier for the panel meter and the recycled range switch that still needs to be cleaned up. I made two little brackets to secure the new front plate, which is also held by the slits in the frame. You can also see the resistor that replaces the old meter. This resistor of 39 ohms turned out to be too low and I replaced it with a 220 ohm resistor which is much closer to the actual value. At the back and shielded from the measuring electronics is where the HP34A's power supply lives. My new 5V power supply will need to fit into this space. This is how the fully assembled front plate looks like. The three trim pots are glued on and can be easily reached from the top once everything is installed. As shown here, an improvised connector provides the feed of analog ground and DC out to the range converter switch. This allows calibration of the digital part separately from the HP3400A. I partially removed the plate holding the power connector to get access and added my blue and brown mains cables that tap the original AC mains for feeding my new power supply. You can see how heavily corroded the whole frame is, especially all aluminium pieces, but the electronics were hardly touched. I ran a red and black DC line forward to the panel meter. This is the end that will connect to the power supply. There are also the two blue and brown AC mains connections. The power supply itself is on a piece of perf board. It's a standard circuit with a tiny 6 volts transformer, bridge rectifier, smoothing cap and a low dropout 5 volt voltage regulator. It sits on two plastic standoffs. I designed it to do 100 milliamps, but it really only has to deliver 40 milliamps. The transformer has two times 6 volt windings which are wired in parallel to provide the current. The area looks more spacious than it is because I removed the HP3400A's power supply PCB for easier access. Time to put this together. The power supply is fully installed and wired up. It all fits very neatly in the space available. To calibrate the new display, it works best to temporarily disconnect it from DC out and feed it with a controlled voltage. I'm using my DC millivolt source here, but any power supply should work. If necessary, use a potentiometer to fine adjust the voltage. It is convenient to use 632.5 millivolts for this, which should show up on the display in range number 1. Switching to range number 2, this should be 2000, which itself is already over range, 
but as you see, the trim pot is set to be just at the border of 1999 and 2000, which is perfect. And in range 3, the same value should of course show as 200 or 199. With that done and the display connected to DC out, the combination of analog HP 3400A and digital readout works very well. A true it's alive moment in the best Frankenstein tradition. I was surprised to see that the old HP 3400A itself was pretty much spot on and no major recalibration was needed. Earlier I had used the DC output to test the HP 3400 and found a few problems. In the chopper amplifier board one cap had gone open circuit. For good measure I replaced a few others that look questionable. Lacking expensive axle caps of the right values I used radial caps instead. This required extending one of the legs and I put red sleeving over those but all in all it should be fine. A quick tour of the HP 3400A starting with the chopper amplifier and its new caps you saw earlier. This here is the thermocouple board. The can labeled TC401 and TC402 contains the two thermocouples that do the RMS conversion and are one of the key features of this instrument. Below that is the input impedance converter. The round thing is actually a miniature tube. They are called Novistas. There is a Wikipedia entry on them which is quite interesting. I did replace most of the electrolytic caps on this board while troubleshooting a problem with the input amplification. A side view of the Novista and also a view of the range switch components. These are normally under a separate shield. The large metal can is a smoothing capacitor for the power supply which tested absolutely fine. The input impedance converter board is not rigidly mounted but held in place by some foam filled PCB holders. Maybe that's to protect the tube from mechanical shocks. The foam had completely disintegrated and I put some new foam in to replace it. Without spending too much time on it, here is the overall principle on how the HP 3400A works. The input AC signal is used to heat one part of a thermocouple pair. That temperature produces a DC voltage which is amplified using a chopper amplifier and used to drive a second identical thermocouple. The output of that one is subtracted from the first one. The end effect is that the DC voltage heating the second thermocouple is equivalent to the RMS value of the AC voltage heating the first one. The advantage of this principle is that using the heating effect of the AC voltage to determine RMS, it can handle just about any AC waveform as weirdly shaped as can be with no problems. The weirdness of AC waveforms is the so called crest factor and this meter has no issues with very large crest factors. The disadvantage of this method is that if the amplitude suddenly changes, the change in thermal effects take a bit of time, but that's still tolerable. The spec says it takes less than 5 seconds for the meter to settle after such a change. The HP 3400A can handle crest factors of at least 10 and much more if the signal is not full scale. Most modern meters use other ways to calculate RMS values and they struggle to get much above a crest factor of 4 and their accuracy can be severely reduced. Cheapish meters usually don't even specify a crest factor and in that case the true RMS accuracy is probably not that great if the signal is even moderately non-sinusoidal. I added some crest factor samples here. The easiest way to create a test signal with a large crest factor is to use a pulse waveform where the duty cycle is very low. In this demonstration I'm using a rectangular wave of 100Hz and 50% duty cycle which has a crest factor of 1. The 100Hz is low because of the bandwidth limitations of the clamp meter. All meters have no issue in showing the RMS value of that. Reducing the duty cycle to 10% which means a crest factor of 3.16 and the value on the clamp meter is now notably lower than the Fluke and the HP 3400A. Reducing the duty cycle further to 1% or a crest factor of 10 and now there's a small error in the Fluke but the clamp meter is quite significantly lower than it should be. 
Finally, a quick look at how the range switching works with a new display. In the 1V scale, the selector is on 1 and the display shows the voltage as a number. You need to be aware of where the decimal point should be yourself. So this is really 1.010V or thereabout. Dropping down to 180mV and after a while the HP3400A has adjusted. If I want to see better accuracy, I can switch to the 0.3V scale and put the selector to 2 because it's below 200mV. If the value rises about 200mV, the display overflows and I have to move the switch to 3 to see the value, of course losing some resolution. It's not the most convenient solution, but I made this old HP 34A usable again and I can live with the shortcomings. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. There are many more projects, repairs and reviews coming up. And it would be great if you decided becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. Thanks for watching.